What's happening, everybody? Phil Rossi here with another five minute paranormal for a much requested subject. One that I'm excited to talk about, but I feel equal parts apprehension because this is the tale of a place and of an experience that is very close to my heart. And in fact, was one of those experiences that really, really nurtured my interest and passion in the paranormal. So I'm here to talk about Dudley Town, a ghost town of much myth and legend located in Cornwall, Connecticut. It's a place where you are forbidden to visit today, but I was fortunate enough to take a trip to Dudley Town when I was in high school as part of a class experience. You're probably wondering what kind of class takes their students to a cursed town in the middle of nowhere. This was a class called Call of the Wild, taught by a teacher by the name of Bob Gillette, and it was just incredible. He was an incredible educator. And the basis of this class was nature and his relationship to literature and writing and the creative experience. Mr. Gillette had been taking his classes to Dudley Town for years and years before I went. In fact, my sister took part in a field trip that went to Dudley Town, which is where I first learned of Dudley Town and learned of the legends and the ghost stories. And it was exciting. It was really exciting. And though that trip would be five years in the future for me, I knew that my path would take me to Dudley Town. Fast forward to spring of 1997, a young Phil Rossi joins his class as we take the hour drive from Fairfield, Connecticut up to Cornwall, Connecticut. And the bus leaves us off at the ominously named Dark Entry Road, which leads into Dark Entry Forest. It was a warm spring day. I do remember that. I remember being a little bit uncomfortable as we hiked through the woods and not wanting to sweat too much around my classmates, your typical teenage thoughts. And at the same time, was just really enjoying being in nature, listening to Mr. Gillette share the various uh, stories and myths about this stretch of forest. We arrived at our camping location in the afternoon. We set up camp. We would not be camping in Dudley Town itself. Mr. Gillette's previous classes had camped in Dudley Town before my sister, uh, before my sister's time, but enough strange things happened when they camped within Dudley Town. One thing that stands out in my memory is that they had doused their fires for the night, and moments later, the blazes just reignited full flame. And I will always remember being intrigued by that story. My sister shared it with me. Mr. Gillette later shared it with me. And it just is one of those things that, true or not, just is, and just speaks to this greater magic of the paranormal. And I want to just make this one point very clear. In seeing Dudley Town come up on social media lately, it's been on TikTok, Avery After Dark did a story about Dudley Town. I've seen it all over YouTube and, and on Instagram. And interest is kind of seeing this resurgence in Dudley Town. And it's got me to thinking because I, I often think about Dudley Town. I often think about my adventures there. And it's not about any single ghost story or any single experience that has taken place in those woods. It's about the power of place. Something I've talked about on Don't Turn Around, something you'll hear about on other podcasts. And it is something that really cannot be described in words. It is something, it is something that must be experienced. So we set up camp, we have a quick lunch, and then we do a daytime tour of Dudley Town. And the first thing I noticed when we crossed out of the camping area, we made our way up the trail beneath a fallen tree, and then we're in Dudley Town proper. First thing I noticed was it was so quiet. It was so quiet. And we're talking, it's springtime, so the birds are singing, squirrels are running through the brush. So there's you know, you're hearing the noises of nature, but not in Dudley Town. Not in Dudley Town. And that was that really struck me as as strange. And silence can be unsettling, especially in the middle of the woods. It just should not have been that quiet. 
So we do the tour. We kind of see the various foundations of old buildings, because really that's all that's left up there is just the foundations of the buildings that had been part of Dudley Town. And then we head back. We have some dinner. We wait for the sun to go down because, of course, we're going to go back to Dudley Town. But when we go back, we're going back at night. So this was a part of the, of the, of the experience of connecting with just the greater energy of the location where Mr. Gillette would drop us off in different locations in Dudley Town. And you could either go solo or you could go with a couple friends. And he would leave you for about 10 minutes and then come back and, and kind of regather the class. So we're heading toward where these ruins are and suddenly there is a car pretty much in the middle of the woods. Now there's no roads that will take you to Dudley Town. You have, you have to hike. But yet there is this car in the middle of the woods. It was an older, like 1970s, got a big sedan with the metal bumpers. And there was a man standing next to the car. And Mr. Gillette went up and he had a, a brief conversation with the guy. And I remember, I, here's what's weird. Here's what is so weird. I didn't remember about this occurrence of seeing this man and his car in the middle of the woods until I was being interviewed on another podcast called Strange Familiars, which is a wonderful show. And that's what actually really inspired me to start doing my own paranormal podcast. But that memory was was submerged. But it, it But when it came back to the forefront, I remembered it vividly. This guy had long, dark hair, maybe kind of just above his shoulders. He had a beard. He was wearing sort of green, like the same color of this green army style jacket with a buffalo plaid flannel shirt beneath. And you may or may not have heard tales of Flannel Man uh, on the various paranormal podcasts out there. Uh, Flannel Man is a thing and it's... There are a lot of theories about what Flannel Man might be, what his presence means, and I'm not saying it was Flannel Man that we encountered in the woods there, but there was no real explanation for one, why this car would be in the middle of the woods, two, how this car got there, and three, who was this man that was talking to Mr. Gillette? And I wish I could have asked him what they talked about. And what's interesting too is it had its its headlights were on, yet we didn't see it until we were right up by the car. And it was it was dark. It was it was it was nightfall at this stage. That um, and it just it made no sense. So we leave the man in his car, and and we are heading closer to the town, and then we we stop. And Mr. Gillette just wants us to, to take in the silence. And, and as we're standing there, this pocket of cold air descends on our group. I mean, noticeably colder than it had been uh, the rest of the day and even that evening, noticeably colder than it had been on the other side of that fallen tree. And everyone remarked on it. We all, we all felt that sudden change in temperature. And it wasn't a draft. It wasn't the day cooling down. It just a pocket of cold air just descended on where we were standing. And that was a, that was a great precursor to our solo experiences once we got into the ruins themselves. And I'll have to save that for the next five-minute paranormal that I do about Dudley Town. If you've ever been to Dudley Town or have friends that have been to Dudley Town, we at OSI would love to hear about these experiences. And a great place to do that is in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and enable notifications so you know when more content like this five minute paranormal drops. So, on behalf of us here at Old Spirits, I want to say thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of this community. Stay safe, and we'll see you in the field.